Saludos. Welcome back. It's your host, Gabe Morales. We have been covering Mexican Mafia members over the past 60 plus years. Once again, I really appreciate all your respectful comments and feedback as I constantly try to improve this channel. Today, we are going to start off with the P last names, as in Paul. First off, we have Howard Daryl Passini, which I believe is an Italian name. He went by Cappy, and I show had ties to both LA and the San Diego area. He had an A number, 40676, and was made MA in the 1960s after the shoe war, which he participated in, against the West Familia Mexicana prison gang, which basically had their coming out party in September of 1968. I believe he paroled in the early 1970s, but then returned with a B number, 64415, and then dropped out sometime in the late 1970s. I believe he was deceased by 2001. We have George Padilla, who is from New Mexico. Like Jimmy Joe Lucero, who I mentioned had strong ties to Washington State, George Padilla also had ties to the Sindicato Nuevo Mexico which was a prison gang that had, had early ties to La M. George was part of Los Padillas family, which is decades-old family-ran organization. I understand that after he got done with his time in Califas, that George returned to New Mexico and died in a shootout with New Mexico law enforcement. Let me know if you know any details about that. We had Jocks, a.k.a. Jaco Padilla, from Azusa. He had a D number, 51019, and was made AMA around 1994. I understand one of his sponsors was Chuco Castro before he rolled. Jaco was known to be a big drug dealer, and I understand that he also considered getting some dogs from the Aryan Brotherhood to guard his drug operations. These were some of the same dogs that were being bred by Cornfench Snyder and Dale Breches which I'll get into more detail when I get to the Aryan Brotherhood roll call series. The Zusa La Puente Aryans in the San Gabriel Valley is known to be a heavy gang to the area and a strong tax base for the Metzca Mafia. In addition, Jaco Padilla was controlling parts of in nearby Bolimparque and El Monte, all of which are known to be heavily gang-infested areas. I understand that Jaco was out on the streets in the 1990s when Boxer Enriquez and Mo Ruiz were out when they killed David Loco Gallegos. I show that Jaco was housed in Corcoran in 2000, and it was during this time frame that his common-law wife, Maria Lola Yantara, engaged in a war with Rafael Cisco Gonzalez Munoz from La Puente. Lola was also living in La Puente and didn't like the fact that Cisco was encroaching on her drug dealing business. Cisco was aligned with Ralph Perico Rocha, who had recently been released from the BOP, and appears on the cover of my Mexican Mafia book, as seen here. Eventually, Lola Yantara became so upset with the two Mexican Mafia members that she ordered a hit out on them. Basically, Perico and Cisco were getting their juice from the federal faction of the Mexican Mafia, while Jaco and his wife had stronger connections to the state faction. When Cisco and Perico were released from federal prison in 2007, that's when they made their moves, their movidas, and started encroaching into Jaco and Yantada's drug territory. The local drug dealers were often confused on who they should pay taxes to. They would say that this guy has the blessings of the big homie Perico, or they would drop Jaco's name. Eventually, several of the players in this feud dropped out, including Jaco and he was housed at Lancaster on a protected yard in 2004. He was at SATF Corcoran in 2012, and I understand died sometime after that. There was a Joe Grumpy Padilla from La Puente, I believe by the townsman. He had a C number, 92619, and was made MA sometime in the 1980s. My understanding is he was a money man. I'm not sure that he even committed a murder. Which, as I referred to when I cover the M.A. Reglas, usually it takes a 187, a blood in, to be admitted to the M.A., but not always. If you got a lot of money or a lot of dope, they will let you in. I believe he is no longer in good standing by 2009 and was housed at Salinas Valley Prison in 2012 when I lost track of him. There was Gilbert, a.k.a. Gil, but he a Roy Ball. I believe he is originally from the Pomona Chino area, but then ended up moving up to Fresno. He had a B number, 36891, and fell out of favor with the M.A. in the late 70s. According to court documents, Alfie Sosa told Ramon Mundo Mendoza that he and another emero, Danny Choco Montiano, who is from Barrio Jardin, had killed Gilbert Roybal. 
February 18, 1977. According to Mundo, Sosa also mentioned that Roybo's girlfriend Lupe, who was also present in the house when Roybo was killed, should also be killed because she was a potential witness to the crime, and said, give her my regards, which is code speak for she should be killed. I remember screening many letters at Folsom Prison where Carnales or Camaraz would say, this guy needs serious regards. Same thing, they should be killed. Mundo also states that Sosa stated, I should have a bottle of T-Bird with her, which is another code speak for death. This would be one of over a dozen murders that Alfie was involved in. Then there was Manuel Chita Petty Arroyo, who was the stepbrother of Gil. Manuel was also from Chino and had an A number, 65683. He was made MA sometime after he hit CDC in the early 60s and was housed in San Quentin in 1971. He acquired a B number of 9547 and was involved in the hit on Death Row Joe Gonzalez and Woodsy Reyes from the Nuez Familia while he was at Q. Here he is seen here, Chavo Perez and Alejandro Moforel and Daniel Spider Ariaga. Understand that he dropped out and I think then we moved out of state. We have Arturo Chino Padua, who I understand is from DF. Distrito Federal, the capital of Mexico City, he had a C number, 40659. Being that he's Mexicano, Chino has always had a lot of influence over the Paisas, Mexican nationals, and with his drug connections, has been considered a shot caller for many years. He was housed at Pelican Bay for a lot of years, where he was heavily involved in MB politics, and has had some health issues recently, so was housed at a California health facility in Northern California. He is currently 65 years old. There was David Puppet Paez from Florencia 13. He had a C number, 40353, which is not too long before Chino Padua got his C number. So they're probably housed at Chino CIM Reception Center around the same time. Understand that Puppet was made MA by at least 1976 and was active for many years. He was involved in the 187 of Marcelino Ortega on August 27, 1980 in Palm Desert with Joe Varelas. And I understand that Puppet is now deceased. There's Antonio Tony Palacios from Gary Loma. He was MA by at least the early 70s and also did time in the federal system at Lompoc with Champ and the rest of the Carnales. He finally was released in February 1989, and then, I understand, went to Hawaii, where he was involved with the Hawaiian faction of La Heme. I understand that he ended up being wanted, and then was finally captured and put in the L.A. County Jail in 2007. He went on trial and was convicted, and did some time at Sentinella in 2013, as well as New Folsom in 2015. I believe he was released in 2016, and I am unsure of his current status. But if you were still alive, you'd be 82 years old. Then we have Alfonso Fonsi Palomino from Fresno. He had a B number, 84173. He was made MA by at least the early 80s and was housed at Pelican Bay for many years. He was released and then came back with an H number, 42119. Understand that he's involved in taxing not only Sureños in the Fresno area, but also in the northern part of Tulare County. Bonzi is said to have even made a couple paisas as M.A., and he ran a lot of paisas in Fresno all the way down to Baker's. And some of his relatives were very influential in the Bulldog Nation, which was covered when I discussed the history of the Fresno Bulldogs. One clarification from the last episode in regards to the assassination of Donald Littleman Ortiz, who was from Whittier Barrio Locals, perhaps Los Chico Subclick. I showed a picture of Manuel Snevi Quintero, who was believed to be involved in the successful murder plot. As I stated before, the M.A. had been trying to get Ortiz for many years, but the trigger man is said to have been Cesar Palomino, whose DNA was found on spent casings from the crime scene after the murder of Ortiz that took place in Chino on November 19, 2021. Palomino was born in Acapulco, but grew up in Long Beach and claimed Barrio Pobre, which is located in a few different areas of Calipas. I've even seen them up in Washington State. I believe they originated in Long Beach and had a lot of Mexican nationals, a lot of paisas. Authorities arrested Palomino in Las Vegas in April 2022 and searched his home, where they found a black blazer and black Italian dress boots that resembled those worn by the man captured in surveillance video fleeing the scene of the crime. A lead detective in the case testified. Pelomino was also recorded on a San Bernardino County jail phone talking to a relative saying, they told me if you eat a butterfly, you become a butterfly. 
A butterfly wings resemble the shape of an M, and it is one of the Mexican Mafia symbols, also referred to as la mariposa, or butterfly in Spanish. Evidently, Palomino believed if he killed a past M on the lista, he would be admitted to the organization. The person who allegedly told him that was Snuffy Quintero, who gifted Palomino a car after the death of Ortiz. There was a Jojo Parea who had a C number, 58353. I remember this guy from New Folsom, and I pegged him then as being an MA sleeper. He was real low-key, but I knew that he was always up to something. I'm not sure if he was from El Monte Flores or possibly Crazy Riders. I seem to remember that he had a tattoo of CC Rider. Anyways, I believe he was later validated and did some shoe time, but I'm unsure what happened to him after 2004. There was a Frank Smiley Paredes from Florencia. He had a B number, 22726. I show he was MA in the mid-70s, doing some time at San Quentin and Folsom. There was Rocco the Rock Pasante, who was from somewhere in L.A. County. I show that he had Mexican Mafia and La Costa Nostra connections. As I mentioned in multiple previous episodes, there were several individuals who had connections to both the Mexican Mafia and La Costa Nostra, including Joe Morgan. Pasante was housed at San Quentin in 1966. I know he had an A number, but I'm unsure of what that was. I do have a birth date of October 10th, 1925, so I'm pretty sure he is now deceased. It was Michael Psychospeden, P-E-D-E-N, and that show was somewhere in the San Fernando Valley. He was convicted of assault with a deadly weapon in 1985, whereby he caught his D number, 35980. He paroled after a couple of years and then came back on a violation in 1987 and was housed at CTF Soledad. He was released again, but popped on the murder case in 1990. And I'm thinking must have took a plea bargain because he paroled in 1996. He then was popped on a major marijuana sales case and came back with a K number, 80344. And has been in CDC ever since and is presently housed at CTF in Soledad. Michael John Payton is 56 years old. There was Jesus Leroy, a.k.a. Lito Pedrosa. From Primera Flats. He was one of the original Mexican Mafia members in the late 1950s. He had an A number, 67073, and was housed at San Quentin in the early 60s, but eventually fell out of favor and was killed by Mike Ison and Richie Ruiz in the early 60s. There's Avaro Joker Peña from Watts Grape Street. He had an H number, 72592, and was made MA by the late 1990s. He was housed at Pelican Bay for many years and then moved to Kern Valley State Prison and then High Desert State Prison and is currently housed at Corcoran. There was Jerry Wino Pena from Hardin. He had a B number, 19124, and was made MA in the 1970s. During the late 1970s, Jerry Wino Pena was pulling multiple robberies in the East Bay area of Northern California. He was arrested in Oakland and housed at the San Francisco County Jail on bank robbery charges, but... He escaped on February 13, 1980, with three others. He then fled to Mikey Son's mom's house, Nellie, and police staked out her place, and she was arrested for harboring a fugitive, and Acha was returned to Folsom Prison on a six-month parole violation. Evidently, some of the Meadows blamed him for Mike being popped on his case during that time frame, as Wino was killed in November of 1980 at Lompoc by Vic Murillo and Huero Tres Portillo. And lastly, we have Refugio Rufas Peña. I believe he was from v &E. He had an A number, 79872, and was another one involved in the beating of the Nuestra Familia Randa brothers just prior to the assassination of M.A. icon Cheyenne Cadena at CIM's Palm Hall in Chino Prison. Understand that he got released and was in, involved in the murder of a guy named Aragon at Nutty Nero's bar in 1974. I'll have to look that up. I believe that's in Moko's book. I remember him telling me a little bit about that particular case. But Rufus Peña ended up dropping out after that. And so, I have to cut it off there. I hope you learned something new. As many of you often teach me new things also with your comments and feedback. I'll be back real soon to finish off the peas. For now, this is Gabe Morales signing off for Gangsters, Cops, and Politicians.